Escape the Fate, I feel like, just doesn't have the same punch as their mid earlier works back in the mid-2000s uh, were able to accomplish. Uh, don't get me misconstrued, there are some good tracks on this album, like Blow, Rather Be Dead, Lips Like Knives. Uh, Spencer Charnas from uh, Ice Nine Kills on Cheers to Goodbye is a nice feature as well. Uh, I feel like there was a lot of room for opportunity on this album, or maybe the songs just don't seem like they've been fully realized. Like, you can tell on songs like Irreversible that it just doesn't sound typical to the production, but also the missed opportunity for other musical choices were even more on this pretty serious XM Octane album feel. I am convinced that Polaris will always be in my top list for the year in albums. In 2020, they were in my top 5 with The Death of Me, and then in 2017, uh, they dropped Mortal Coil, which is another album topper with some of the most refreshing and head-splitting metalcore songs you'll ever hear. Uh, this album is just another reminder of who to keep your eye on in the heavy metal sphere of music. Polaris packs this 11 song album with great dynamics with the screen vocals, amazing guitar riffs, and breakdown. Alongside with that aggression that I still continue to love even almost three and a half years later since the first review that I did for them. And the clean vocals are just a harmonious and just a big cherry topper on an album that I will just continue to get me to love this band. Maybe I got the wrong idea of Royal Blood, but Typhoons was an amazing record, and somehow this album is just a complete step down for the blues rock duo. This album I feel is a little bit too generic with the instrumentals, and I thought that the vocals weren't really taking any risks. Just felt as if I was begging for a better project from a band that I know does a lot better. Longtime friend of the channel, Mixie Demner and Sitched Up Heart dropped their third studio album, and they just continue to be one of the more exciting alternative metal acts today. I was able to catch their set at Blue Ridge this year, and this album sounded even better without me having any context to it. With context, this album is even more of an improvement from 2020's Darkness, which we discussed on my Forgotten podcast. This is a whole album, track by track, impressive guitar work throughout the runtime, and as always, Mixie's vocals take center stage with the dynamics of her high soaring cleans, and her harsh vocal fry just make the songs even more listenable and more exciting to listen in on. The supergroup containing the members of Turnstile and Trapped Under Ice drop another album that is really like no other. I can always appreciate when a band is hard to pinpoint with their sound, and Angel Dust creates a sound that is a mix of pop rock, punk, hardcore, and I guess you can add some like bluesy type stuff in there as well with some of the guitar riffs they were strumming on most of these tracks. Born to Run and Brand New Soul are pretty big examples of that uh, mix of dynamics in a genre as well. The percussion on this album is really interesting as well. Uh, the album is full of unique and musical choices for the punk sphere. It's a great listen for anyone that wants to get into hardcore but doesn't want the hard shit yet. But even for someone who enjoys music, we'll just appreciate this project for the diversity of the band and the sound. On the Conquer Divide's second ever album, and since their first project was released back in 2015, I was definitely excited to see some new music, especially after I was able to interview them shortly after the reformation in 2020. Now to see them at an even bigger stage was amazing to see, and this album definitely more than exceeded my expectations. Janelle's screaming vocals are even harsher, Kia's cleans are just never disappointing, and always just blow most of the vocalists out of the water, and the instrumentals are just masterfully crafted, and despite a few songs I may have found a little bit lacking, such as Wide Awake, uh, this album is a great return to form for the multinational band. I think I've definitely grown out of Olivia Rodrigo's music. I can see what Rodrigo was trying to do on this new project, but she was trying to make this like teeny indie pop rock punk music, but I feel like this album has just seemed a lot more obnoxious than sour, which I actually enjoyed a decent amount of. Uh, there are some decent tracks that kind of deviate from the indie stuff I said earlier. Uh, Lacey is a lot less slower in pace with the acoustics. Uh, same with Making the Bed and Teenage Dream, and I feel like this sound is what we I need more of from Olivia. Especially because on Sour, I also said how I didn't like Brutal for the same reason. I'm not really a fan when she pushes into that yelling high register that she utilizes even more on Guts than she did on Sour. Please don't get your lemon squeezed, that would be a side to see. Reach out for a hand out, then get back. All the songs sound the same with the overcompressed guitar beats and scream rapping, and I don't have anything other to say about it. Like 
best Mitski album to date. The songwriting is absolutely vivid and the poetry throughout is very atmospheric yet almost somber lonely feel. It's just very mesmerizing throughout, especially because all of the songs are no skips. Mitski's vocals are at the top of their game and just from her last project, 150% improvement on the replay factor. And just everything in general, instrumentals, production, and not to mention the even the vibe that the songs give off, just each individual song has such a personality about it, and just like with the ambient sounds like wind or raindrops throughout the music, just blend together so well, and it's just wonderfully executed. Through the party of the century, the people came over, no one else over. I heard that this is supposed to be Rod's last singing album before he changes up his genres, which I think is a shame because this is probably my favorite Rod Wave project. His singing has always resonated with me for the melodic rapper side of the sphere, but his vocal chops really get the shine through on this wave. The album might be a little bit too long, but the albums do just have a lot of great songs on it, uh, like Long Journey, uh, Call Your Friends, HG4, Crazy, Fight the Feeling, Boys Don't Cry. But if I had to recommend one song, it's probably Great Gatsby. It's probably Wave's best vocal performance to date. I won't act like I wasn't worried about this project after it was delayed uh, due to the second firing of CJ McMahon due to his transphobic comments on his Instagram. And then they had to redo all the vocals with a new vocalist, but I thought that this album was actually still pretty well made, and the new vocalist that they brought on, who has been revealed to be Tyler Miller from A Virgin's Crown, which is a great choice for a new vocalist. Typical extreme deathcore uh, that you'd hear from Thy Art Is Murder, but Tyler actually fits the band a lot better. Not my favorite album from this band, obviously. It was a kind of confusing listen, but they were one of my gateways into the deathcore uh, side of music, and even I can say that this album was not ruined at all. This is probably the worst album of this year for me, personally. Vic Mensa basically rips off every artist in the industry on this album, and he also just tries to sound so profound with his progressive lyrics, but also, the, like, the songs have no structure to them, like, Vic doesn't even try to rhyme, like, half of his lines on this album, which you don't always need to, but I feel like for rap, and especially with a commercial sound, like, this album tries to give off, I feel like rhyming is just an essential part of being a rapper. Also, I just want to mention how terrible his 93 Punks album was that he did back in 2019 as well, so I already had a terrible uh, impression of Vic Mensa uh, after listening to that. And also this line. Very pro-black this man is. Using his face on the paper, first off, who the fuck even reads a newspaper anymore, by the way? And comparing it to a national tragedy is just a terrible simile. I'm just gonna have to say it. Fell off, L, get ratioed. Bullshit that this album was completely self-written by Doja Cat. This is such a step back for Doja, and you can just tell that there is no genuine personality to Doja's music on Scarlet. If all the TikTok weirdos are correct and this is supposed to be a, a humiliation ritual into the Illuminati, I would not doubt it. I'm like a camel, get handled. Look, I grew up listening to the hardest bars, getting faded barbershop. Did you guys really expect anything less? This is probably the most inauthentic, most ignorant, most homophobic, most transphobic, most I'm not racist, but I have a light-skinned nephew that I never see album I've ever listened to. Production is terrible. The rapping is somewhat kind of better than mediocre at best. The songs are just so disconnected from any actual intelligent takes on any issues that they touch on. And trust me, they try to get at least every buzzword topic that is featured on this shit. This is to be expected from these two artists, but God, this thing needs to just burn in hell. <laughs> Earlier last year, we got a taste of Blood Command on the channel with the Praise Armageddonism last year, and uh, I was not expecting new music from them already, but holy shit, this Death Pop sh uh, stuff is kind of cool. Get these guys over to the States right now, because if anyone is a fan of hardcore, pop rock, pop punk, or just any very high energy music with a very strummy guitar, you will just love this project. I will admit that some of the songs that are less than a minute, we could have done without, but uh, this album is just a ball of energy that will just have you by just every grip of your limbs and just, you'll see how hard the album goes when you listen to it. I feel like this album was just Common Code Orange, which, off of their 2020 record, which I enjoy so much more than the above, uh, I just don't think that there's much of a creative difference or anything to differentiate this album from anything else in their discography. 
It just seems like it was stripped back a lot. Code has always been known for having their industrial metalcore type sound, but underneath held a sort of term that I called glitchcore with all the cool electronic elements that was on that project, but I feel like instead of them using that on top of the songs to add atmosphere, they instead just wanted to mix it, mix in the more generic electronic elements instead of using things like distortion in the vocals or synths that create a feeling of unease like on their song Swallowing the Rabbit Hole. Could have been a lot better in my opinion. Koyo's debut LP is just an absolutely refreshing listen. I got to see Koyo a year and a half ago when they opened up for Knocked Loose, and they were relatively smaller uh, than they were at the time, but now they're getting on even bigger hardcore stages, such as This Is Hardcore in Philly, and if I had to compare, this album reminds me a lot of old school stories so far, where it sounds a lot like there should be a scream vocal, but there isn't. It has a similar sound, but holy shit, these songs are just so good. I wish that they actually had more material out so they can do a headline tour, because this album with no barricade would go absolutely crazy. It out is like a power car. She said she a eater and she treated like a power lunch. La 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 la, her mouth like she This is a decent little mixtape. The title definitely speaks for itself. We're all waiting for the Carter 6, but we got this to hold us over. And at least Wayne shows a lot, a lot more versatility in his sound. I mean, Good Morning, No New Bitches, Tuxedo, Cat Food, Act Up. These songs shouldn't go as hard as they should do, but they just do. I am the invisible man. If you look, you will find me come I think I like this project a lot more than his Cowboys Don't Cry album that I reviewed last year as I feel like this sort of less gimmicky indie slash acoustic songs really do fit his voice a lot better. And they may blend together sometimes, but sometimes with the track list, but I think that alone in a crowd is a small improvement with his sound. So slowly getting better. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Yes, we are back finally. We got everything set up. Oh God, I just hit the tripod. Hope you guys are ready for all the concerts that are about to come back out and for the channel and everything. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I will talk to you all later. I may be lower now, but I can see so clearly, there's only one decision.